Hello again. Uh, the first part of this video will explain a little bit about of like the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and then later we're going to talk about light wave um, optics and how colors are formed. So the first question is like, what do light radios, waves, microwaves, and X-rays have in common? Uh, so the answer is uh, they're all forms of electromagnetic waves and um, then first of all like how was uh, like the existence how would the existence of electromagnetic weather detected mm. so um, James Clark Maxwell um, was one of the you know the theoretical physicists Back in the days, uh, he was also one of uh, one of the best. Uh, he he already knew that from from Faraday's um, from Faraday's law. Right? So if you remember from Faraday, what we said is like electromotive force or voltage. That means the changing is equal to change in flux uh, over time. So he knew that this change in flux means. B times A, right? It means magnetic field multiplied by the area. Right? So he already knew that the change in magnetic flux will result in in a certain voltage. If there is voltage and there is current, then that means uh, there will be a change in electric field. So that means like he knew that like the change in magnetic field will result in electricity, right? Then at the same time, the presence of electricity or in general like current, we learned that like in a current carrying wire as an example, there is a magnet, right? A magnetic field being created. So that means a changing electric field also generates a magnetic field, right? So therefore, Maxwell, developed an equation trying to describe the behavior of uh, electric field and magnetic field being like being moving in tandem like that means like if there is a magnetic field then if there is a especially a change in magnetic field then there will be a change in electric field if there is a change in electric field and then there will be a change in magnetic field okay so you know that connection that connection between electric field and magnetic field being moving in a certain space in like in like in space just um, being existing in tandem it, it, it's it's like um, for instance if you have if you have the electric field like you know it's very difficult to draw it in a magnet in a three dimensional kind of thing uh, but if you have like so if you have time like this then if you, if you if you imagine like this is this is an electric field so if an electric field is created and then if it's changing it means like at some point it's decreasing 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 it reaches zero and then increasing in the negative direction and then it's going up and so on and so forth something related to like you know you can generate this kind of um, situation using um, an alternating current. So let's say this is the electric field, right? the one that I just drew. And then because of that changing, uh, changing electric field, then you will also have like a changing magnetic field. And then their direction is like somehow perpendicular to each other. Okay. And then it's like this. Well, one is on on the horizontal axis when they were at the other ones on a vertical axis see so the the blue one is being created by the magnetic field right so this magnetic field and this electric field they are they are acting in a certain kind of a tandem motion okay then he wrote an equation he wrote a mathematical or a theoretical equation that is trying to explain the behavior of the electric field and the magnetic field 
then therefore what he also realized is like there is a wave that is involving those fields and that wave could propagate in space that's what he that's what he proposed and uh, and then like then of course that's his problem you know it's just like he wrote just a complex kind of mathematical equation that involves this e and b the electric field and the magnetic field and then being motion in space uh, then later another scientist um henry henrik hertz he um, he he confirmed the presence of such a wave by 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 you know by 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 creating an antenna so an antenna that can reach particularly like a radio later he developed the radio wave so Henrik Hertz what he did is like he conducted like he took that theory from Maxwell and then he conducted an experiment trying to generate an electromagnetic an electromagnetic wave um, and then he tried to sense it and then he was able to record it then he he literally um, confirmed the existence of electromagnetic wave uh, so you know Maxwell suggested the existence of the electromagnetic wave and then later um, Henrik Hertz confirmed the presence of it okay uh, so you know then that's 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 the overall theory of like how electromagnetic waves are are started okay so what is an electromagnetic wave then I you know I just pretty much uh, tried to explain in the previous slide how it started how Maxwell theorized about it and how um, Henrik Hertz conducted an experiment to to detect it okay so uh, what is an electromagnetic wave we already said it an electromagnetic wave is it's a wave that consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields moving in tandem okay so which radiate outward from the source at the speed of light uh, so then what happened is later uh, then Maxwell uh, he uh, he uh, you know Maxwell he he used uh, the two constants like that involve el electrostatics you remember like there was a K and there was a k prime so if you remember this k uh, was coulomb's constant okay from from electrostatics and there was a key k prime parameter that was um, mostly from ampere's equation it's like the one that involves um, the one that involves like two parallel wires you know to find the force between two parallel wires so within that um, Maxwell's equation like and then if you you know when when Maxwell solved that equation trying to find like the speed of um, electromagnetic wave then what he learned it is like the speed of an electromagnetic wave was uh, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second so he, he he you know he solved his own equation and then he he finally learned that like the speed of the speed of the speed of electromagnetic wave is that much okay uh, then by looking at this uh, what what happened is then even before in in 1849 or something so maxwell just came up with so much of this thing like in in the 1860s but in in 1849, uh, you know, another, another, another scientist, um, his name was Fizeau, um, he conducted an experiment and then he predicted the speed of light was three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. Okay. So, um, so this is, this is, this is from Maxwell. about electromagnetic waves and and this one was from uh, from from a previous scientist um, way before him uh, physio AU 
so um then this was this was for light this was this was detected like experimentally he conducted an experiment and he found out the speed of light was this maxwell rather he used um, his equation for for an electromagnetic you know wave you know based on theory and then using those two constants eventually he found out that like the speed of an electromagnetic wave is this the later maxwell by observing this coincidence he he further um suggested that light is an electromagnetic wave or an electromagnetic radiation okay and then and of course like you know later they found out that yes electromagnetic light is also acts as uh, an electromagnetic wave okay so then that means then in the electromagnetic spectrum then what they found out is like okay then light is an electromagnetic wave and then Hen Hen Henrik heard showed that like there is a radio wave that you know we cannot see but still uh, it can be detected and it's also an electromagnetic wave then you know eventually like uh, what happens is like that the presence of that electromagnetic wave is not really limited within light it's it's just like a spectrum it can be like you know a very wide uh, range of value range of uh, values in terms of wavelength and frequency uh, so uh, as it said like then electromagnetic waves you know just they vary depending on their frequency and wavelengths it's not just like the lights and the optics that we see uh, but also like it can be a radio wave it can be um, a microwave it can be you know uh, another form of light you know x-rays gamma rays and all that um, so therefore we know that like a general equation to calculate the speed of a wave is frequency times lambda right then for electromagnetic waves this v is constant it doesn't matter in which spectrum you can be whether it's a light spectrum a microwave a radio no matter what this v is constant for electromagnetic waves and how much is it it is this much three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second okay that's like 300 300 000, um meters per second is it 300,000 kilometers per second okay or 300 um, million meters per second that's what this means uh, so therefore c equals f multiplied by lambda and this equation is applicable only for electromagnetic waves okay so then the speed of light equals frequency multiplied by multiplied by uh, then uh, in your textbook there is there is an example which says example 16 uh, 1 probably it is it's worth looking at it um, so I'm going to read the example and the example states the following it states like um, what are the frequencies of the following uh, following then a says um, radio wave with a wavelength of 10 meter okay a a it says like so the question is frequency for both cases and it's a radio um, with wavelengths 10 meter okay so this is a radio wave um, so the solution is just simply as we said radio is it's an electromagnetic wave then it's going to be um, lambda times frequency the frequency times lambda okay the question is what is the frequency so you can isolate the frequency by dividing both sides by lambda Then as a result, your frequency f is going to be c over lambda. And c is the speed of light, or the speed of an electromagnetic wave. 
divide that by lambda which is n here okay so if you do that then your frequency is going to be three times 10 to the power of seven per second per second means hertz okay. so you can find you can find the frequency like that and it's a similar question part b is part b says light wave with a wavelength of um, so now this is for a light wave lambda equals six times ten to the power of minus seven meter okay you just apply the same equation frequency equals c over lambda c is three times ten to the power of eight meters per second and lambda is six times ten to the power of minus seven meter right you can do all sorts of like fractional whatever so by three one by three two then that would be 0 0.5 right I'm just trying to remind you like how you do exponential division so exponential division means just 10 the power of 8 you have there right so the minus 7 when it goes up it will be a 7 and you add them together right that's what you do try to revise your algebra and all the jacket then what is going to be happening is it will be 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of 15 per second means heard you can put your answer like this or in a scientific notation it is uh, will be five times 10 to the power of you know this instead of having 0.5 then what you are having is five so therefore you take a 10 off of this then that would be 14 okay all right perfect so let's get back to our slide um, all right then next uh, then the next is like the electros the electromagnetic spectrum then you know once we know like light and certain visible including the visible range uh, is an electromagnetic wave so you have the visible range around here this is categorized based on the wavelengths so this is like uh, if you compare their wet the a given wavelength uh, with uh, with the size of like something that you may anticipate okay so for instance if you see the visible is like the size of a bacteria okay and so in the it's in the range of um, micrometers of course mostly we use a nanometer size but it's around there uh, the infrared it's a little bigger it's to the size of a cell okay uh, the microwaves they can range from approximately to a baseball size to to a period or a dot that you see here in terms of the size of course those waves are not visible they, i mean you cannot you cannot see any of those ones outside of this range right outside of this range it's it's like sound sound also there's there is a there is a certain frequency that we can hear beyond that sometimes we uh, we don't hear them right uh, so then there's a microwave even the microwave that you use to cook your food um, it's like a certain wavelength range probably around around this okay uh, then there are radio waves like your fm radios that you hear and um, the wavelength is approximately the size can be as big as like a house or something like that okay and there are also uh, am radios the am radios mostly they are uh, really long waves okay so the relationship between frequency and wavelength is inverse right so um, it, it means like at the at the wavelength increases or decreases see at, at the wavelength increases in this direction then the frequency uh, normally decreases so in this direction the frequency is getting higher and higher 
whereas the wavelength is getting shorter and shorter okay so on this side of the spectrum like you know x-rays and hard x-rays gamma rays those are mostly like the one that we use for x-ray machine and uh, things like that okay so in terms of numbers it's just like mostly you can uh, you can you can have them in terms of wavelengths you know if, if you try to focus on the visible part as an example uh, it's the range of the wavelength that we can detect in our in our eyes is like from 700 to 400 nanometers okay so that's that's pretty much the visible light and then of course we use it for photography optical microscopy and things like that and of course we also use this for uh, optical astronomy just you know detect um, what kind of material in a certain uh, in a certain planet or star is okay um, then you know uh, wavelength and color uh, so the wavelengths are somehow colorated to their specific wavelength so in the previous slide like some textbooks like they stretch this value to 750 some stretch this one to approximately 350 but that's that's that's, that's fine um, so in general like you know from your uh, from your your prior knowledge of like how the rainbow colors look like there is uh, there is a violent violet color and then there's a blue there is a green there is a yellow there's orange there is red uh, so most of those things like even they arrange themselves in and like in this order when you look at the uh, the rainbow like the rainbow phenomenon like when i tried to explain this like in the very first slide like why do we see rainbows like right after rain and so on and so forth is something related to um, you know, uh, light property light the sunlight is like it's the white light when you when it comes to when you see it right but the thing is it just it's it, it it's, it's it's composed of like seven different colors right the violet something we call it indigo between the violet and the blue then blue green yellow orange and red and those those those, those have their own uh, their own range in between approximate range like it may differ from textbook to textbook, but approximately those values range in and stays closer to 400 and 700 range. Uh, so a question for yourself, like why the sky is blue, right? So it can be this is related to um, related to reflection and refraction mostly or scattering, right? So um, the, the blue color is like the one that uh, really scatters the most uh, in the atmosphere okay uh, because of its size its size uh, approximately coincides with uh, most of the um, most of the particles or or the elements that we have that we have in the atmosphere then as a result like because of that reflection in the atmosphere you have a lot of blue colors um, in like in that in that in the atmosphere okay so that's that's because of scattering the blue uh, really bumps the blue color bumps uh well with the most of the particles that we have in, in the atmosphere okay uh, yeah um then pretty much like that's uh that's that's what it is like about uh, anything regarding like chapter 16 um there are there are a few examples that we may probably do um, in, in, in your textbook they're very uh, very simple straightforward because this this material is it's all about like giving you some interesting overview of like mathematics I mean a little bit of mathematics but uh, general understanding of physics um, so you know examples uh, we may probably go ahead and then probably solve one or two before we jump into chapter 17 materials um, so in your textbook in the textbook that I use for this course everyday phenomenon um, so e1 not e11 
E1 states that like microwave, microwaves usually in microwave ovens uh, often have a wavelength. So here you have your given. Okay, it says it has a wavelength of 12 centimeter. And you know, we use SI units in in this in this in this material um, so we try to be consistent there. then the question is like what's the frequency this is something similar to what we solved in in our previous example right so when it comes to the solution you know it's all um, it's all it's all a matter of uh, selecting like the right equation so here it is c equals frequency uh, multiplied by lambda then you isolate frequency then this divide both sides by lambda then this lambda go away then you have frequencies equal to c over lambda okay so c is of course three times 10 to the power of eight meter per second and your lambda is 0 0.12 meter then that is equal to what the frequency uh, of that value will be okay so um, if you have your, your calculator close to you then you know you can go ahead and solve this uh, if you divide 3 by 0 0.12 it gives you 25 so your frequency is going to be uh, 2.5 times 10 to the power of 9 hertz okay or you know, um, some textbooks, <laughs> they may show you, even even our textbook can put this, like, you know that 10 to the power of 9 is a giga, right? Gigahertz. For me, it doesn't matter which one you put in, like, you can, you can put it in power, otherwise you just simply put it, like, as, as gigahertz, then it will still be fine. Uh, the second, second question is E2, in text, it says, what is the wavelength? So, given and, and required, it says, what is the wavelength of a radio wave from a station broadcasting at, it says, 88.1, megahertz okay so mega means 10 means like 10 to the power of uh, trying to maximize this mega means like 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 6 so equals 88.1 times 10 to the power of positive 6 hertz then we start with the equation that we know c equals lambda times f then we divide both sides by by f then you know this will cancel out and there you will have lambda c is three times 10 to the power of eight meter per second and f is 88.1 times 10 to the power of six hertz hertz mean per second right therefore the per second part can be cancelled out with the hertz then if you if you use your your calculator and and then you know do the math it's going to be uh, plugged in those values i'm plugging them in my calculator then the value that i get is 3.4 mirror okay so make sure that like you do this calculation and then you verify that if the value is correct okay uh, so I want you to to solve them so we did the frequency question we did a wavelength question what else So probably sometimes you know maybe it's worth also to try a little little trick here than than the usual. 
So the question says, in, a, in general, x-rays have a wavelength, so you know, they give us a certain wavelength of 10 nanometer. Okay, so this is our given. And 0 0.01 nanometers. For an X-ray with a wavelength, so it's between and 0 0.01 nanometer. For an X-ray with a wavelength of 8 nanometer, what is the corresponding frequency? Well, so this is the range, just like you can say range. But the real lambda given is 8 nanometer. And you are asked to find the frequency. Pretty much did the same. We already developed the equation. The equation that we have frequency is equal to C over C over lambda. Then what is our C value? C is just constant. 3 times 10 to the power of 8 uh, meters per second. And keep in mind, nano. Nano means 10 to the power of negative 9 meter. Because we have to have it in a psi unit. We cannot put it like as in just as nano. Then the meter cancels out and then only the first part will, will be left. Then the rest is just, just like take your nice calculator. I use the TI30X um, calculator. Then, then it's just the, go ahead and then, you know, plug in the numbers. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so what I get is 3.75 times, I'm going to squeeze this, 3.79 times 10 to the power of 16 hertz. That's what my calculator gave me when I plug in those numbers. If you got a different value, just you know, just shoot me an email and 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 and, and of course I'll I'll verify that. Okay. So uh, you can do a lot more problems, similar problems in, from your textbook. Um, okay. Uh, other than that, um, so this is this is the end of. Um, electromagnetic waves okay um, so the textbook has really other good questions but we're just pretty much trying to uh, limit ourselves to uh, to the level of the material okay so um, as a revision like the things that we learned you know, like how Maxwell came up with the, the electromagnetic wave concept and we learned it like C equals lambda times frequency we learn it like oh, spectrums of um, electromagnetic waves. Mm, okay, and then you know what is the visible uh, range, okay. wavelength range for visible. It's approximately from three hundred some textbooks say. 400 from 380 to 740 something like that okay mm. of course this is keep in mind it's nanometer nano means uh, 10 to the power of negative 9 uh, so you know those are, those are, those are the things it's just a matter of like trying to digest those things but other than that like it's mostly what we talked in this chapter is mostly it's a theoretical uh, background how electromagnetic waves were understood and things like that okay so till the next chapter uh, especially like it's going to be chapter 17 it's going to be optics image formation etc um, until then thank you